Mr. Nimit Soni, Director, Virtual MNC. Our moderator is Mr. Naveen Say. Good afternoon, all distinguished guests and learned aud aud audience on behalf of PIG Chamber of Commerce and Industry. First of all, please allow me to express my heartfelt appreciation to all our sponsors, starting AS Professional Advisory Limited UK and our supporting partners, Namak Properties Dubai, Krypton Global Investments, Franchisee at 360 Realtors LLP, Sterling Finance UK Limited, and Virtual MNC. In organizing this interactive session on much talked about subject in the current market scenario. Due to the pandemic, the overall international investments has taken a big hit, but at the same time, the future seems to be very promising. The world witnessed an increase of 31,000 ultra high net worth individuals in 2019, taking the total number of such people close with a net worth of doctor of dollars 30 million or more to five, 513,200 as per the Knight Frank Wealth Report for 2020. This translates into a 6.4% jump over the year 2018. India ranks 12th and had 5,986 such individuals in 2019, which is likely to reach 10,354 by the year 2024. The number of billionaires in India, on the other hand, is likely to reach 113 by 2024, up from 104 in 2019. Amongst asset classes, Indian UHN WIs are most aggressive in equity investment with 72% willing to invest in this asset class compared to a global average of 29%. Asia is quickly closing the gap on Europe and it is predicted that by 2024, it will be the world's second largest wealth hub with forecast five-year growth of 44%. Of the top 20 fastest growing countries, six are located in, in Asia, led by India with 73% growth, five in Europe led by Sweden with 47% growth, and three are in Africa led by Egypt with 66% growth. Wealth creation in 2020 will be an uphill task as UHN WIs expect political and economic challenges, including a global economic slowdown, trade wars, and political tension to weigh on their ability. A resident individual is permitted to use the annual LRS limit to invest in foreign companies, which can then purchase property abroad. Investment by an individual in a foreign company is subject to certain additional conditions. Indian residents are investing in international properties for appreciation and value, end use or rental earnings. The stability of the Indian rupee and relaxation of fear rules that permit Indian residents to invest overseas have further created an investment climate favorable for international real estate. Indian residents are able to purchase property abroad through a number of different routes. Each of these routes is subject to differing legal conditions and has differing tax implications both in India and the foreign country. Purchasing property abroad therefore requires a certain amount of structuring to ensure that foreign property investments are both legal and tax efficient. Indian investment in property overseas is becoming increasingly common these days. This trend owes much to the fact that overseas property has now become much more affordable for Indians. With many Indians finding their families scattered across the globe, Many Indians are also buying properties abroad in order to visit their dear and dear ones more easily. 29 years since the liberalization of the Indian economy in 1991, there has been a clear uptick in the inflow of foreign investments into India. Simultaneously, more and more Indians are seeking to expand their horizons and make investments outside the country. At the end, I would also request and recommend all the investors to practice due diligence before making any decision regarding taking up any international investment in international real estate as PIG Chamber of Commerce and Industry shall not be liable for any decision or action taken by you based on or relying on the information provided in 
or by the presenter of the or the panelists during the GRE live webinar. With this, I would like to leave it with the experts from the industry to take things further in explaining the benefits of different options available for citizenship in different parts of the world. Thank you and wish you all a very fruitful and meaningful interaction. Stay healthy. Jai Hind. Thank you very much, Vice President, sir, for setting the agenda for today's webinar. So to take this further now, I would like to start with Ms. Mona Jalota, who is the founding principal for Krypton Global Investments. I would invite her to share her views on this. And just to give you a brief uh, background about Ms. Mona, she is a promising woman entrepreneur, founder and MD, is a passionate entrepreneur and a seasoned leader with over a decade of experience in her domain of marketing international real estate in India. Mona has been uh, making waves in this sector and has held senior management positions in major corporate giants like Dandara, UK, Knight Frank India, Coldwell Banker India, Colliers International, and Illuminance of INSAID, Mona counts strategy and business development as her key skills. Her self-funded startup, Krypton Global Investment KGI, is uniquely dedicated Indian platform designed to showcase international properties, migrations, and investment opportunities. So I present to you Ms. Mona Jalota. Thank you, Navinji, for the very, very kind introduction. Um, you, know, you know, we are in very strange, opportunistic time. Even though economies around the world are facing challenges and struggles, uh, you know, for, for an investor, every challenge is an opportunity. I think the Indian market over the last, uh, and I have been doing this for over 10 years now, and I have seen a lot of maturity of thought coming into the Indian investor psyche. Even though we cannot compete with the 72% of Indians preferring to invest in equity, uh, the market, the international real estate market has understood that the need of the ultra h &I in India is liquidity. Uh, gains and liquidity is a very healthy balance for any portfolio, which is why many, many Indians prefer to invest in equity. Uh, now, there's a maturity of thought that is coming in, which is understanding that diversification of a portfolio is important. It's important to have your monies in uh, different economies, in different markets, uh, to ensure that you know you have you're hedging your bets, you're hedging the risk, uh, you're understanding that uh, you know if something doesn't perform here, something else may perform somewhere else. So that maturity of thought is coming in. Um, even this whole concept of concept of international investments and uh, passports for global mobility, which was, um, you know, earlier limited only to the very few uh, wealthy families in India, is now becoming an increasingly popular phenomena with the upper middle class and the middle class Indians as well. Because they are realizing that if it is purely property, then property is much more cheaper overseas. Uh, you know, structuring of property to get uh, leveraging, to get interesting uh, amenities, areas, uh, future appreciation for the benefit of children studying abroad, all these make compelling reasons. Um, the, the investors who are sitting on the fence who are not sure about the liquidity aspect of owning a property overseas are now pre preferring to put their monies and their investments into the funds which are coming in from abroad. These funds offer a very liquid and a very healthy way of uh, you know, uh, exploring the international real estate phenomena and making some good returns and also having a uh, valid uh, The second uh, vertical which has seen a major upswing is uh, your citizenship via investment or permanent residencies that are available across the world via investment. Uh, increasingly, people who are putting money in property are wanting the additional benefit of having an option to either get a permanent residency or to migrate uh, globally along with their investment. So that also is becoming a very interesting phenomenon. Uh, so yes, even though COVID-19 has struck all of us and uh, you know people are still figuring out where, where they want to put their money, um, I do feel that this is a rising, uh, this is a very growing field of investments and we will see much more of this happening with Indian investors and we will see a lot of players from overseas also approaching the Indian investors with tailor-made solutions, keeping the tax uh, in mind, keeping the legalities in mind, keeping the LRS schemes in mind. Uh, initially, when it was us adapting to the world, now the world has realized uh, the power of the Indian investment. 
and we will see a lot more customized products coming up. Okay. So yes, I remain quite hopeful for this sector in the coming. Thank you, Mona Ji, for sharing your views. And I think uh, we have attendees. We will have we will have certain questions. We have the question answer session. So to take this further now, I would now invite Mr. Kahil Kapoor, who is the national head franchisee at 360 Realtors LLP. So just to give you a brief about Sahil, Sahil is an MBA in sales and marketing with more than a decade of experience in real estate sector. He has been internationally awarded for his contribution in the field of franchise consultancy. He has got a Six Sigma Green Belt certification by BSI and is also certified by Redco Institute of Real Estate Management. Being a real estate professional, Sahil believes in a continuous learning and knowledge upgradation. He has successfully completed few international courses like Accredited Buyers Representative ABR and Certified Residential Specialist CRS. Sahil is also the ex honorable Secretary of the Association of Property Professionals, which is in Delhi NCR chapter of the National Association of Realtor India, NAR India. In his previous assignment, he was responsible for setting up and building RE Max Network in India. So I present to you, Mr. Sahil Kapoor. Uh, thank you, Naveen Ji, for uh, such an elaborate uh, introduction. Uh, when we talk about uh, international real estate, I think in the last uh, decade or so, uh, I think uh, a lot of investors have finally explored and realized that yes, uh, there is a place other than our home country also that we can invest in. Because uh, prior to this last decade, people were really wary of investing abroad and a lot of information was not there. I think with the emergence of certain IPCs in the country, with the emergence of certain organized real estate brokers in the country, and especially, I think all credit to, uh, as Mona rightly said, to DeMac, because they have probably, I think, uh, created that uh, impact in the market and made people realize that, yes, international real estate investment is not a very, very distinct dream. Also, I think there was a lot of uh, confusion with regards to investors in terms of their mind. Uh, can we really invest abroad? What is the kind of money that uh, we have to go? And people usually thought that, there'll be a lot of money which we'll have to put in if we think of investing abroad. But I think in the last uh, five years or so, people have realized largely that Indian real estate in comparison to international real estate, in terms of pricing, we are almost at par. In fact, uh, some of the major markets like Mumbai, uh, Bangalore, I'm talking about the main uh, CBDs, some of the major markets like Delhi, I would say they are, uh, they are more expensive than even international investments. Uh, the biggest reason why people have looked at international markets, one is diversification. Because as a prudent businessman, nobody would want to put all their eggs in one basket. So that's the reason people have majorly invested in properties abroad. I mean, everybody knows that in Dubai, Indians are one of the largest uh, investors as an outsider. But in the last uh, few years, a lot of other uh, countries have also come into the country, come into India, and they're looking at investors, they're looking at investments from India. As an example, uh, we've been working with this uh, organization from uh, Bali. I mean, they're very, very prominent uh, in Indonesia, and now, now they're looking at investments from India. The kind of rental yields these companies are off offering, uh, the kind of uh, benefits these companies are offering, I think it's difficult for some of the Indian counterparts to manage those kind of rental yields because in comparison to the rental yields we are talking about residential two percent three percent here in india but any decent international property by a credible name i think the rental yields are almost in the tune of five percent six percent and some developers have even gone on to the extent that they've offered a guaranteed return for almost ten percent for a period of three years four years five years as well now that is something which has given uh, people uh, a lot of added advantage and probably another reason why they should invest abroad. Uh, who are these people uh, buying properties abroad? Major, uh, I think, audience was ultra HNIs in the past, but today, even working professionals, some of the top professionals in organizations, and especially those guys, those business owners who have their children studying abroad, I think they're one of the biggest target markets for people wanting to invest in properties abroad. Uh, what has happened is uh, a 
apart from us apart from canada europe london smaller destinations have pitched in thailand has come in big time in india and they have been selling properties in india starting at 40 odd lakh rupees i mean in 40 lakhs it's difficult to afford a property in any of the metros in the country and at 40 odd lakh rupees today you can afford an international property in a market like thailand in a market like pattaya which can be used as a holiday home which can be used as a timeshare basis and you have somebody to manage your property as well so there are a lot of advantages which are being offered right from rental yields right to some kind of an adjustment in terms of cash i shouldn't say it in the public platform but i mean that's the reality which is happening right then apart from that uh, there is somebody to manage your property the rental yields are pretty high your occupancy rates because of those destinations being holiday spots are very very high so you can use that as a summer vacation home you can use that as maybe a home for uh, any of your friends and family who are visiting abroad so multiple reasons are there and today when mortgage in india is very very expensive uh, people have an option of buying a property abroad at a much lesser mortgage pricing because we are sitting at what somewhere around 8 to 9% but if there is an availability of cheap mortgage which a lot of developers are supporting at 3% 4% while buying any foreign real estate that gives another additional uh, capital edge to any investor so there are multiple reasons why people are investing abroad but what has been the biggest change in the last couple of years is destinations other than the most prominent one like london dubai the other destinations have opened up abu dhabi has now come into india and they are trying to sell their properties here uh, thailand has come into india right uh, indonesia has come into india so a lot of countries are eyeing investments from india because they feel that yes globally we are probably the top 5 real estate markets wherein they can expect investment from ultra hnis back in their hometown that's it from my side for right now thank you very much sail for sharing your views on this and i am sure you will have questions because i can see he started in the chat box so we'll take it later so now i would like to invite mr sayed irshad rahman the head of sales damak properties dubai so just to give you a little background about mr rahman mr rahman worked with the top developers in dubai for more than 15 years in real estate and overall sales experience of 20 plus years he is handling multi billionaire usd portfolios of clients from india europe africa far east and other countries currently is working with damak properties as head of sales damak properties as we all know is a leading developer from middle east based in dubai and damak is partnered with trump international golf club pendi casa paramount pictures versace kavli and lot more i think rahman ji would be touching on all those subjects so we would like to hear a developer's perspective on this mr rahman please uh thank you so much mr navin uh it's a pleasure to be on this platform today with the uh, respected guest uh you almost uh, gave a background about uh, the mac am i audible is it clear yes very much clear all right uh, i'll just give a small brief about the mac properties and then i'll talk about the the mac process uh vision about uh, the market uh, damak started uh, in 1982 as a private developer in uae and our chairman mr hussein sajwani uh, you know is a, is a man behind this uh, company today we are uh, one of the biggest and the largest developer in the middle east uh, with more than 29000 units delivered and around 33000 homes is under construction at the moment we have developed uh, 50 million square feet plus uh, more uh, huge projects which are the master development for the mac which is the mac hills and the blue oxygen and we are partners with some big names like uh, trump international golf course versace rotana radisson jeskawali and tiger woods so these are the brands which are associated with the mac in terms of you know adding their brand value to our portfolio uh coming back to the the discussion uh, see a lot of people they invest in dubai uh, the reason is they want to get a good return roi which even today the you know dubai dubai uh, market is giving 7 to 8% uh, also the security is most important thing today uh, if you look at around the world uh, you know people they have a lot of money but still they they have different terms of uh, safety uh, for the family so people they do come here for the safety as well 
and the most important thing is the residency. Now, anyone who buys a property in Dubai worth around 100 million plus, 1 million plus, which is approximately $300,000 onwards, will be entitled for a residency for, for the families and themselves. Now, most of the people we have seen from India in the last four to five years are coming here because of uh, the residency and also is a tax fee. So they're going to save, save a lot of taxes if they start a business here, if they start working. Now, in last one year, uh, coming back to the theme of this uh, forum, a lot of people started buying it. Hello? Hello? No, so we can hear you. Yeah, okay. So a lot of people we have seen even from the, the, the small cities from India, they started buying in, in Dubai. The reason is uh, as the location of Dubai is very close to India compared to Europe, America and uh, Far East as well. Now, it has become a second home for a lot of Indians, uh, especially people from Delhi, Bombay, Hyderabad, Chennai, Bangalore. They all would like to have assets here in Dubai. Uh, Dubai offers a world-class living. Uh, one of the most important uh, you know, reason people they invest in Dubai is because of the infrastructure, safety. These are the two important things apart from being a tax-free country. A uh, lot of new education universities have started in Dubai. Uh, almost from all over the world, there is a representation of the education here in Dubai. So these things make Dubai a very good place for investment and you feel at home. Uh, there are more than 200 nationalities in Dubai. They all live here in harmony. We don't feel that we are a foreigner uh, to this place. Uh, apart from this, uh, you know, uh, we have started uh, in terms of uh, investments. Uh, coming back to one of the uh, questions of our panelists, uh, we have started even with the hotels for the investment, which gives them a rental guarantee for issue three to five years, depending on the project. We associated ourselves with uh, Chains like Radisson, uh, which is one of the, the project coming up in the Mac Hills, which is our flagship project. We are associated with Paramount. Uh, the hotel has already started where the people can buy and give uh, a property to lease with the Mac and they can get the returns. And time to time, we do have many uh, offers for our clients who want to invest in Dubai and get the returns. Uh, post Corona thing, uh, we've seen in last one month, there's a lot of demand for villas and townhouses in Dubai, uh, for which even people from India can buy sitting in India because we have all the information uh, online. Now, advantage of buying a properties here, they will get a certain return on an average, which is seven to eight percent. There are mortgage facilities also available for people from India, which they can buy up to 50 percent for a ready property. Uh, having said that, not only that, but we are very much focused on other parts of the world. Africa is one of a key market. A lot of people, they do buy here because of the residency. Lately, we've started in Europe. We see a lot of traction from Italy, uh, US, and few other countries. So Dubai is a place, a home for everyone. We welcome everyone here. We are thankful to the vision of our uh, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed Al Maktoum, who was a visionary leader. And the way we dealt Corona, it's adding value to all uh, Dubai at the moment. Uh, we are the, probably one of the few countries who started so fast, we come back on track. Everyone is back to office now. So we are looking forward to a very good start again. Uh, apart from that, we do have a few master developments, which are the Mackels and Akoya Oxygen. These are the, the huge projects in terms of the area. We do have the villas, townhouses, apartments, service apartments, uh, also the service, I mean, fully furnished villas. The portfolio is huge. Uh, it's a definitely a good time to enter in the real estate market of Dubai, uh, because the prices are very good at the moment, which is probably, I mean, uh, frankly speaking, the properties in Dubai, sorry, in India, places like Mumbai and Delhi is probably more expensive, uh, but Dubai properties are quite affordable at the moment. Uh, this is it. Uh, I would like to thank you again, everyone, for giving me this uh, opportunity to be with you guys today. And uh, I'll be very happy to be in touch with all of you in the future as well. Uh, please feel free to get back to me if you have any queries. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Mr. Rahman, for sharing your views. And we look forward to have many more such uh, webinars and then maybe a uh, physical event as well soon with you. On. Sure. We normally have a lot of events in India. So whenever things get normal, definitely we'll come back to Delhi, Bombay and others.
to have our own image. Sure, sir. Thank you very much. Thank so you. now, friends, I would like to invite uh, Mr. Anuj Sethi, the founder and managing director, AS Professional Advisory Limited UK, who is also our webinar partner for today. So just to give you a little background about Mr. Anuj, he has an extensive experience in property finance having worked in real estate property credit for over seven years. He has worked at a debt fund, ICICI Bank UK and RBS. He is involved in loans with a value of between 0.1 million to 30 million pounds for residential construction, financing and lending against income producing properties across the following sector like residential offices, retail, student accommodation, hotels and warehousing. He has been involved in various transactions where investors from India have acquired properties in the UK having previously worked at ICICI Bank. He is also keen to work with investors who are looking to acquire property from them. Currently, he is tutoring a real estate economics and finance course for a top UK university. So we would like to uh, present to you Mr. Anuj Sethi to share his views and uh, tell us that how raising finance for property transaction in UK. Mr. Anuj Sethi, please. Yeah, thank you for the kind introduction. Um, can I'll load up my presentation now. Um, so Mike, do I have to press share content again? Mayank? So can, can you see yeah, my yeah, screen? You can, you can see the content now. I've already made it. Okay, sorry, one second. Sorry. Yeah, it's uploading now. Yeah, that's great. Thanks. All right, can you see it? Yeah, it, it says Anuj Sethi is sharing uh, the content. I think it's going to upload it. Yeah, yeah. we can see it. Yeah, now great. we can see. Yeah, okay, thank you. So th thank you very much for the kind introduction. Um, as articulated, um, I've got extensive experience in the banking sector. Um, I'm now set up my own company. I'm, I'm looking to assist with international investors, um, acquire property in the UK, um, and I can arrange with the debt finance. I have been doing this for um, quite a few years now. So just to uh, start with this, the presentation, um, I'll, I'll just start with introducing, giving a background on myself, um, as was just done. Um, also art articulating what I can do and then just a couple of examples of what I've done in the past. Um, so just starting. So, yeah, experienced property finance professional. Um, I was at ICICI Bank UK um, for three and a half years. Um, recruited as a real estate credit specialist. The bank was looking to grow quite a lot in that sector. Um, when I joined, the exposure was 100 million US dollars. We managed to go to 500 million dollars by the time I left. Um, no defaults which occurred, which um, you know, was a credit to us because we went through the Brexit stage. Um, so, yeah, so we, we've seen like how the market has shifted in the UK. Just, just another point on that, uh, following from Brexit, uh, the UK has seen a lot of correction in its, in its debt financing markets um, post a credit crunch. In the credit crunch in 2008, LTVs were at 90% or, or even higher. There was a lot of losses incurred by the banks. Thereafter, the LTVs, the loans to values have come down to about 60, 65%. So these crises like which have occurred now with Brexit and COVID-19, um, all that's happening is there's a tweaking of the LTVs. So there is still lending going on and the banks aren't taking massive haircuts. It's just because a lot of the corrections has taken place um, after the credit crunch. Um, so prior to my time at ICICI UK, um, I was at RBS for seven years, worked in various departments, um, including as a credit risk san sanctioner, uh, but worked across the board in uh, on the front line as well. Also worked at a, a real estate development finance debt fund, um, which was focused on uh, uh, funding developers in, uh, who are looking to um, build multi multi units, primarily apartments. But I have also got experience. At, um, on funding single high value houses in in um rich in extremely valuable areas in london at the moment i'm also um, tutoring a real estate economics and finance course for the london school of economics it's a short finance course um i'm involved in that at the moment which is um you know for me it was a, a key personal aspiration so 
Um, I'm doing that at the moment. Just moving on. Um, so yeah, so the types of transactions I worked on uh, in, in terms of construction financing, multi unit schemes, so apartment blocks, high value houses. I think in the UK at the moment, with the current situation with COVID, um, there's a, there is a shift towards high value houses because people have realized that they're stuck in their houses, in their, their, their personal residences. They don't want to be stuck in two bedroom apartments at the moment. They want to have a, a three or four bedroom, a two story house. So there is a growth in the UK in that sector. Um, in terms of income producing properties, um, I've lent against residential properties, so single units, um, where predominantly there's been in, international investors, um, portfolios of, of properties, and apartment blocks. Um, I've also done quite a lot of commercial, um, that being retail, um, high street retail parks, shopping centres. Um, the retail sector is quite down at the mo moment in the UK, um, especially shopping centres. Office, I've done quite a lot of office blocks where there's been um, various tenants in the building. I think with office, it remains to be seen as to how the market will go in the UK. Um, warehousing, industrial, um, that includes logistics, distribution. This is um, the key growth area in the UK. It has been for the last five years, but I think now with COVID, it's going to grow even more um, with, the, with the growth of online. Um, student accommodation, uh, we've got you have university links and also the private operators. Um, and also hotels, where that being owner operated under names such as um, uh, so owner operated, leased, and branded. So, um, Travel Lodge, Hilton, these sort of hotel transactions have been involved in. Um, so, student accommodation, hotel, it, it, it remains to be seen as to how the market will go with them. So, in terms of loan sizes, worked um, on loans from £100,000 to £30 million. Um, so, that's ranging from one, one crore upwards. Um, I, I, I'm not doing the calculation for the 30. Um, so just moving on to some, so yes, yeah, so just what I can offer. Um, so I'm looking to assist people from India who are looking to buy properties in the UK. Um, I can assist with raising the finance. Um, furthermore, also if you actually um, already have a loan or a property in the UK and you want to raise finance against it, I can assist with that as well. Um, and also on the administration side, I can I can assist with the um, the administration in terms of company reporting or even speaking to some of the commercial tenants for you. Right. Just get a couple of case studies. So um, we're pr primarily um, focus on income producing properties at ICICI UK. So we had some investors who came from India looking to buy properties in, in London, um, say for about a million pounds looking to raise um, debt against it to help with the finance. Um, given the rental yields in, in London are slightly less and also there's, there was a, a concentration risk with the rental income, um, the bank generally looks to take a, a cash deposit of about six months um, finance costs. That was just, just to protect in case of any vacancy risk or if there's any um, late loan payments. Um, another point to pick up on is the loans are generally structured over five years um, on a, and on affordable terms. Um, I'm aware in India it can be for about 10 or 15 years, but the loan fully amortizes during the loan term. In the UK, with commercial real estate, um, you'll have a five year loan, but it only it doesn't fully amortize. So the loan payments are affordable. So your day one LTV would start at 60%. Um, you'll be paying the interest, but also the capital payments would be staggered. So you do, you, after five years, your LTV, based on the original value, may only be 50%. Um, so it does it does ease the pressure, the pressure. Um, and also there's natural growth in the UK because your rental yields could be about 5%. Um, your cost of finance could be about, say, 3.5%. So even on the proportion that you're raising finance against, you're actually making a profit. So there is that's why the UK lending and the property market um, has been growing for quite a long time. Um, just going to the next example. So also dealt with quite a few investors from um, India who are looking to acquire commercial properties in, in the UK. This could, uh, these were either retail units or office blocks. Um, so yeah, so these, these, but these are generally more um, as, um, time intensive and also because there's, mu there's multiple tenants in place, it does require an asset manager to be um, working with the investor to speak to the tenants on a regular places. On a regular basis, so 
um, just to also ensure that these could go through. And because there were various leases in place, again, we looked um, at ICICI to take a cash deposit. Um, this would be allow the loan to be serviced in case of any potential shortfalls in the, in the loan. Um, however, if you manage to improve, improve your lease profile, the deposits could be released back to the investor. Um, so just in case of, I'm still in regular contact with some of the, the team at ICICI. Um, I think the LTVs now are generally below 60, but I think that with the, with the current situation, it could be around 55% LTV. Um, just moving on, uh, if you've got any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Um, I've got my contact details here as well. If you, you can maybe take a photo of it. Uh, my personal mobile number, um, you can, I'm available for WhatsApp messages and also my um, email address and the website. Yes, and that's the end of my presentation. So um, any questions, feel free to, to reach out to me. Thank you, Mr. Anoj, for sharing your views. I think in the question answer session, uh, people will be having certain questions to ask. So thank you once again for sharing your presentation and being with us today. Yeah. So to take, it, to take it further, now I would like to invite Mr. Kamlesh Rajput, FCCA founder and managing director of Sterling Finance UK Limited. So just to give you a little background about Kamlesh Ji, Kamlesh Rajput Ji founded Sterling Finance in 2001. He was also the chief financial officer at SS Systems UK Limited, managing director of Sterling Will Writers Limited, acting business consultant to Dolphin Seminars Limited, managing director of Kure on Business Limited, governor at the Ashton Sixth Form College, external examiner at the University of Wales, Newport, treasurer at Bharatiya Vidya Bhavan, Manchester, as well as the president of Gujarati Rajput Samaj, Birmingham, UK. His career started as an honorary lecturer in banking and business at the MS University, Padoda, India. In 1986, Kamlesh joined the banking sector in the areas of foreign exchange and financing import-export trade. From 1986 to 1992, Kamlesh worked in London, Birmingham and Manchester. So I present to you Mr. Kamlesh Rajput. He will be mainly touching on the taxation aspect of international real estate. Mr. Kamlesh, please. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Can you all see my screen now? Yes. We can see that. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, Naminji, thank you very much for your kind words. Um, and I'm really honored to be here today. And I'll be sharing you uh, the the passion aspect of the real estate in the United Kingdom. Uh, so let us address the one very common mistake people make is UK and London. The United Kingdom has got four countries, Scotland, Northern Ireland, Wales and England. And London is a merely one city in the south here. You would have heard, so this red area is England. Um, there are some places I have highlighted. There's a Cambridge here, there's a London in Southwest here, and there is Southampton, Midland, very, very popular, very densely populated. All Asia, many Asians are there, and this is the north of England, Manchester. So that is quite important to understand. Now, I'm going to share with you the taxation aspect of investing in real estate in UK. I would also like to simply share this with you, what we mean by real estate. You can buy a land because in, in this country, uh, land and building can be bought separately. Um, you can buy land and building together. And, and there are three types of properties. One is residential, one is commercial, which is office buildings, and the other is industrial buildings. The taxation of that de depends upon the type of property, but it also depends on the type of ownership. The taxation uh, is different if the property is purchased by the individual or 
is the property bought by a group of people, maybe family members or friends or the associates. Um, and the tax is charged as per the ownership of the shares in the property. And one of the most efficient way of investing in real estate is to incorporate a limited company. So these are the taxes which will happen during the process of buying and selling the property. So the first one is stamp duty land tax. So every time you buy the property as a buyer, you have to pay percentage of stamp duty. There are different laws in Scotland. There are different laws in Wales and Northern Ireland as well. This is a one-off tax at the point of purchasing the property. It also depends on the type of property and the value of the property. So your stamp duty land tax can be 3%, 4%, 5%, 8%, 13 or 15 depending upon the value of the property. The second type of tax which you will pay is income tax. So the income tax is charged if the property is owned by the individual or the partners. Whereas corporation tax is charged if the property is owned by limited company. So these tax charge on the rental profit of the company and it is paid annually now it is very very tax efficient to buy the real estate in the name of limited company because the tax is only 19 percent however if the investment in real estate and property is purchased by individual your tax can be 20 percent 40 percent or 50 percent depending on your total earning. Another tax, and many people get caught out, and uh, our friend Anuj will know very well, that many times people do not estimate or make provision for VAT. Some properties, there is a VAT, and it's a very complex uh, tax regime in UK when it comes to real estate. So, it is generally exempt, but there are some properties that you have to pay VAT at the time of a purchase, and VAT in the United Kingdom is 20%. The next tax is uh, capital gain tax. Capital gain tax arises when you sell the property. When you sell the property, uh, the capital gain tax can be 28%, 38% depending upon your status, taxation status. And it also depends the use of the property. If you buy the property and if you live in the property for a certain period of time, there are certain exemptions. The next one is inheritance tax. I get many cases like this that parents, um, they buy the property and sometimes something happens to parents, one of them departs from this world, and the share or the entire property passed on to the children. Inheritance tax is very unforgiving at 40%. This can be avoided, absolutely this can be avoided if a careful tax planning is in place. The next one is a business rate tax. So this is, um, when we, uh, in India, we may call it as a house tax or housing tax. So every year, the local authority charges you this rate, uh, you know, which covers like policing, fire, um, the uh, cleaning and road services, all the services provided by the local government. So this business rate, for the small businesses, many of them are exempt, but the rate is still there. And it is very important when you make a real um, estate investment that you buy the property, you, also, uh, you find out which area has got 
either zero business rate or there is a concessionary business rate. We also need to know, uh, you know, the, there are four teams in the process of buying the property. One is a seller. Seller will not sell you property directly. You know, seller will involve estate agent who will fight the corner for the seller in order to get more and more value for the property. And seller will have to appoint a solicitor to sell the property. The process of selling the property it is also known as convincing, which cannot be done by individuals. It, it is a legal process, so the lawyers are involved on both the sides. Second team involved is yourself as a buyer. You will have your own solicitor. You will also need your accountant and your tax consultant. The, the third agent who is arranging the finances for you and there is there is ultimate lender who is going to lend you that money but the lender will have its own legal team who is going to write the terms and conditions for the loans and that is another um, process that sometimes takes time and the fourth group of people who, which are involved in the transaction is hm revenue the tax department in United Kingdom is known as Her Majesty's Revenues and Customs. We call it HMRC in a short form. They collect all the taxes. And your bank, um, where you are going to collect the rent, it is, it is possible and it's very, very common that your lender bank is different than your operational bank. And the last party is company's house, if you are going to incorporate a private limited company, there is one national organization in United Kingdom where all the incorporations are managed and handled and reported is known as company's house. Some of the important factors I like to summarize here is that London is a city, not a country. So when you make an investment or when you do your searches, you will see so many reports and news and the blogs and they mention London. London is a very, very congested city, very uh, multicultural and very cosmopolitan and overcrowded. So there are certain reports which are relevant to London city, but it may not be relevant for the rest of the United Kingdom. The second thing you need to consider very carefully is the location of the property. Is it in England? Is it in Wales? Is it in Scotland or Northern Ireland? The property price may be different and the tax will vary as well. You also need to be very clear about your investment. Would you like to invest in residential property, industrial property, or a commercial office space? The most um, Crucial decision at the time of re making real um, estate investment is would you like to buy it personally in your personal name or two or three family members or friends or associates or would you like limited company? Limited company is the most tax efficient and pays only 19% tax. Financing of real estate is another crucial thing that there are so many. Uh, Frontline bank in India, we call it schedule bank. Here we call it clearing banks. They are not designed for real estate, but they do lend to real estate, but they are very picky and choosy. There are separate specialist lenders for the real estate. Look out for them. Um, and how and who is a lender is quite important. And is the lender, there are various types of lenders as well for various sectors as well. For example, if you are a manufacturer, if you are buying a manufacturing property, there are specialist lender for the manufacturers as well. You also have to have a clear strategy. It needs to property real estate, we all know is a long-term uh, investment. So there is no quick fix on it. Um, so you do have to be patient about that. 
and you also have to have clear strategy which area you want to buy the property and one of the things i like to uh, reiterate here is as an investor you may be looking into various uh, countries in europe maybe in us as well but london has a most tax efficient transparent a safer place to invest uh, invest as well and very good growth um, it is a, a investment uh, philosophy higher the higher the risk higher the profit so you have to balance the security versus the profit the taxes are paid one off like stamp duty land takes uh, tax quarterly or annually be careful about the local taxes and national tax and investment in real uh, estate is a teamwork you need a funding advisor you need a tax advisor and you also need a legal advisor on this note i'd like to thank you for giving us the opportunity and sharing your afternoon with me thank you thank you very much uh, for sharing your views and uh, i am sure that there are certain questions which we will uh, uh, request you to address later on so till now uh, the, all the panelists who have been there we are discussing about the challenges and opportunities for international real estate investments financing the taxation part so now i would like to invite uh, our friend mr nimit soni the director from virtual mnc who is basically with a background from the exhibitions and event sector and during the current uh, global pandemic who has been trying to come up with certain virtual uh, platforms where we can showcase our exhibitions and conferences and b2b events so i would like to invite nimit and uh, request him to share the virtual perspective what he feels on this nimit soni please thank you Yeah, Nimit, please go on. Are you able to hear me? Yes. Okay, I was facing some issue. Okay, I hope my voice is clear. Yes, it is yes. very clear. Uh, first of all, th uh, thank you for introduce introducing me, and thank you, PhD, for inviting me over to talk on the uh, virtual perspective on the real estate. Uh, good. everyone i am nimit soni and i represent virtual so before uh, we can discuss how a virtual event platform can benefit global real estate players i would like to briefly uh, introduce myself so uh, for the last 12 years i have been handling our family business legacy of over 65 years uh, by the name of parasa studio and we are pioneers in the country and i am myself third generation in our family run brick and mortar to provide infrastructure services for different scales of events from small to really large world our business has very very important role during any large scale exhibition conference or government summits in the country before covid 19 time we have been uh, primarily providing infrastructure and other services on turnkey basis for physical event last 65 years we have never ever seen such a time when there are no physical events happening so keeping in mind uh, the covid 19 times we wanted to change as per the current situation and we have added value from our traditional brick and uh, mortar system with online events platform so we have developed a new platform so before i take you through this platform i will take you through some images uh i hope my screen is visible yes sir is visible if you can make it full screen that will look better it is it is full screen it is full screen again wait yeah perfect is it is it showing as full screen to you yes okay so before covid 19 this was a time like this is how the event used to happen so the hall with session is happening and you can see so many people are sitting and people are walking around a physical infrastructure event which has been created people are taking pictures registration is taking place outside exhibition hall prime minister summit an event in russia everyone is taking pictures together 
an event for Kendra Vidyalaya where all the students are gearing up for their performances. More than six thousand students participated in this event. Prime Minister taking pictures with uh, the other world leaders, addressing to the audience of over thirty-five hundred people, taking pictures with world leaders. International Solar uh, ASEAN Summit, Solar Alliance. So these are the thing of a past for time being. During COVID times, we thought that let's make best of our time and resources, and let's pledge not not to and do some. So, what we can do for global real estate players, we can give clients, present them your projects, help people make their choices for real estate. How it is possible? So this is our platform. Uh, what are the advantages of using a online virtual platform? You can uh, engage participants in real time. There is no software required. You can your you can measure engagement and return on investment. Uh, you can customize your own venue. Uh, the attendees can access even from uh, any of the devices and across the globe. There is no commuting which is required. So primarily, these are the three services which we offer. But I will quickly jump to some snapshots. So for example, this is your virtual event lobby. So I can actually take you through the live demo also. But today we have. Left so this is a snapshot of a virtual event lobby this lobby is entirely customizable you can have your projects branding here you can talk about you know you can have a welcome video message which could talk about your uh, projects or a group of builders can come together and participate uh, expo so all these things are possible few more designs of the lobby there is a live information desk wherein you can ask live questions if you have Example of the lobby design. So, as you are actually going to the live event, you will be face, uh, feeling the uh, live emotion as you are. So, for example, you inside the hall, you are attending a session, or like how we are doing, it is possible to attend a session in this hall. So, for example, you got of uh, so. For example, when we uh, talk about uh, UK or Dubai, so one hall could be you know uh, focusing on Dubai, the other could be focusing on London, the other could be focusing on probably on Singapore. So all these things are possible, and based on each focus sector of the region, we can focus on projects. It is possible to uh, you know, do one inter by points. Uh, so one is the video, the other is a product brochures. We can also do one to one. In this uh, platform, you don't need any external application to do interaction. Possible to schedule a call. Appointment is possible to do. It is possible to chat. So whatever were the features of a physical event, we have tried to platform. You can scroll through different booths. These these booths could be different. So, for example, uh, you could talk about one of. The, so, for example, when we talk about uh, Dimac from Dubai, so this could be one of the projects. This could be other project. This could be other project. This could be other project. So, based on each project, you can have a sales representative uh, marketing that project when you do exhibition on platform. So, uh, this was this was uh, from the front end. So, from the back end, if you see, you can actually access the. Uh, Exhibitor dashboard, wherein, wherein you can see how many documents were seen, how many documents were downloaded, how many logged in users were there, how many live users were there, uh, how to do video call with one to one with the buyer. So all are possible. So before before uh, before uh, the clock strikes four o'clock, Mr. Gives a minute. I will just run a quick video. This. I just do that. So this 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 is of a uh, event which we did for economics. So the video is not audible, uh, and now we can see it because of the bandwidth issues.
I hope the video was visible. Yeah, Nimit, it was, but I think there is a. If you can share the link of this video with all, that will be more appropriate. Okay, I think there was a lag in the video because of Webex. So, yeah. So basically, uh, through a platform, you can have a three D experience of a event, and, and you to market your projects to the uh, prospective clients across the globe, and it's a very you know easy and approach and it's called to and if you have any queries you can just write to me and i'll be very happy to answer thank you naveen ji for uh, inviting me over i i i hope uh, you uh, you all of you find it useful for your projects to market them to uh, target audience thank you very much nimit for sharing this and i am sure this is the new uh, coming which everybody would be interested in and as we have been discussing we will be coming up with our grace gre global real estate and citizenship expo which will be in august so i will request uh, yeah this is the event which we are planning this will be on the same platform what nimit was just showing so this will be in august and we will be sharing more details with all of you and request you all to participate in this and attend this event so thank you very much to all for uh, Hearing your views, and I think now the floor is open for question and answer. So we have already a lot of questions in the chat box which we have seen. So before that, I would like to invite Mr. Surinder Kalra, who is our co-chairman for International Affairs Committee for Gulf, <coughs> and uh, I invite him uh, to uh, share his views and also ask his question. Mr. Surinder Kalra, please. Good afternoon, everybody. You can hear me, sir. We can hear you and see you, sir. Okay, thank you. Good afternoon. In fact, Naveen ji, I'm really thankful to you for such a wonderful uh, invite at the last moment. I'm going to speak extempore. I don't I have a PPT to immediately share with the uh, audience, but uh, I really liked uh, the PPT of uh, the Mark, Mr. Ekshad, Mr. Anut Sethi, and Mr. Kamlesh Rajput. They were very good. And uh, what uh, the fourth gentleman has shown, that was also something new, the virtual AR, VR thing. That was very good. Now, I would introduce myself. We are a firm of chartered accountants, 40 years of experience. And uh, we have been uh, working for real estate companies and consultancy companies like uh, CBRE and uh, uh, GLL. We have handled a lot of projects in the real estate in Chennai called Tidal Park and then in Kolkata and Delhi, Noida and uh, Noida and uh, even uh, Gurgaon. We have dealt with the uh, international companies also. And almost all the aspects what uh, Mr. Anuj Sethi and Kamlesh ji were telling, the taxation part being charter account and, and now there are certain niche areas which our firm handles, which I would like to coordinate with uh, Irshad ji, Anuj ji. On, uh, we handle a lot of, there are a lot of cases coming up nationally, domestically, in the domestic market, as well as in the international market, on arbitration and mediation in the real estate sector. And uh, so if there are anything, we can help you on those things. And one which new thing which we have learned the real estate companies in China, there is a province 350 kilometers south of Shanghai called Jiangsu. There are a lot of real estate companies there. As far as the technology and other things are concerned, they are very much using the high-end IT thing for blockchain in construction, as well as for Mr. Anuj, for giving or getting them bank loans for real estate purposes. The blockchain is a technology in which it's a public key and a private key where they can work. It can help the real estate companies to uh, finish their projects in time. And online, even the investors can see what is the progress in their project. Similarly, Anuj can get help in blockchain, particularly if where is the loan, the KYC things. But it, and Irshad ji can also get help for KYC of people who are investing in their projects. So we can coordinate with the two gentlemen here as far as blockchain, IT things are concerned, 
and as well as the arbitration. I don't think that legal cases should come up, but it is inherent in real estate. There are a lot of real uh, arbitration and mediation cases coming up. This is what I wanted to tell you, but real estate at the moment, as far as in India it is concerned, we have seen uh, uh, that uh, motor and cement buildings, they're lying vacant. WeWork has uh, had a big loss because people are not going there and occupancy is almost 50%. Maybe after the lockdown and everything, it will take little time for the real estate sector to pick up now. And uh, even the malls and other things are opening slowly and the government guidelines are really very strict as far as distancing are concerned. It will take little time for the real estate sector, both residential and commercial, to come up as, as far as COVID-19 is concerned in India. But I think in GCC countries, the people have taken, the governments have taken strict steps and I think it will come up much faster than what is may come up in India. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Kalraji, for uh, sharing your views. So, Ishadji, would you like to comment on what Mr. Kalra mentioned? Tell him uh, after this event to discuss it further. I mean, I would like to share my contact details with him as well. And uh, definitely, uh, we probably need him sometimes in terms of our sure. and all. Uh, I'll keep in touch on that. Thank you. Kam Kamlesji, your comments on this? I would uh, very much like to work with Mr. Kalra and the rest of the panel. Um, here in UK, what we've seen is that the, there is a shortage. Uh, for the last 20 years, UK has a shortage of housing. And this has been the reason why the property market has um, continuously grown. Whenever the property market seems to have gone down, it is only because the players in the market, for example, lenders are not preparing to lend the money. So the demand for the mortgage is, uh, you know, dampened. However, the real fact on the ground is there is a shortage of housing in this country. There is also a shortage of commercial uh, properties here as well and what we find that because the property tax is a very complex tax only certain individuals uh, come into the market if they come and they get the right team together right good expert then they really really create a good wealth in a very very short time as well thank you complete I think now I would like to invite Mr. Vivek Agarwala from the attendees. He has certain questions to Mr. Rahman. So, Mayank, can you unmute Mr. Vivek Agarwala? Vivek ji, you can ask your question. Mr. Rahman, I think Mr. Vivek has just left, so he has put certain questions in the chat box. Yeah, I think uh, it, it's, it's mainly about uh, the price drop in Dubai financial compared to pre-COVID in December 2019. I think it's too early to talk about price drop in Dubai because we are still under COVID now. And uh, uh, frankly speaking, uh, in my company, demand we don't have such any drop in the prices except we have uh, some promotions. From time to time, we do, you know, have it for our clients. Uh, in general, yes, I think uh, overall Dubai, there is probably around 5% to 10%, which uh, could be one of, uh, you know, uh, a drop. But overall, uh, things are okay at the moment. Okay. And is another question was, which country would be more lucrative between Dubai and Mauritius post-COVID to invest in residential property from rental return point of view? I always, uh, you know, will uh, tell, will answer it as Dubai because Dubai is, uh, I feel, the best place to live and invest uh, because, first of all, it's again tax-free. I've been to Mauritius many times. Uh, yes, there are a lot of hotels, 
entirely dependent on uh, depending on the tourism. But Dubai, if you look at it, they've got many things, which is definitely a security, lifestyle, uh, tax-free, close to India, uh, very accessible. You you know, basically you feel like it's an extended part of India. Within two to three hours, you come land in Dubai. So definitely, again, it's Dubai. Uh, the returns are much uh, lucrative in Dubai than Mauritius. Uh, Mauritius is mainly, you know, even if you buy a villa, uh, I don't think, or an apartment, it's quite expensive compared to Dubai. So with the same amount of money, you can multiple investment and double the ROI. Uh, good. I think other questions already, Anuj has already replied to Mr. Vivek on the investment either in London or in Portugal. He has already reverted to him. So I think I would uh, like to invite Mr. Vikram Doshi. He has asked certain questions. So Mayank, can you unmute Mr. Vikram Doshi? Yes. Vikram Doshi. Hi, am I audible? Yes. Uh, hi. So my question is actually uh, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, uh, while uh, uh, you know the, the real estate, international real estate uh, is fairly attractive and varied locations, and I uh, an esteemed panel of speakers here at IC uh, offering locations from varied markets. Uh, of course, in my opinion, obviously, UK seems to be one of the most balanced, safe, and uh, a really sought-after location. I'm just curious, uh, and my question is uh, uh, to uh, Krypton Investments uh, for Mona Jalota. And uh, just wondering, uh, is there any still potential, uh, considering uh, uh, UK as uh, it's a known location to be an expensive location? So would a small investor uh, also have options to choose from in the UK? And if yes, what sort of... Uh, what sort of ticket size are we looking at or the values are we looking at and along with that what benefits one can expect thank you um so vikram yes uh, you know like uh, one of the panelists uh, here explained uk has uh, you know a lot of different countries and london is just one of the capital city in england uh, so is there a price point that is attractive for a first time investor in the uk absolutely are you going to get an apartment in Times Central London uh, as a first-time buyer with a limited budget? I doubt it. Uh, but there are several other locations uh, in the north of England or in Wales, in Scotland, in many areas where you would have a starter apartment for as low as 80 lakh Indian rupees. Uh, definitely these uh, you know, come under the purpose-built accommodation sector, as we call it. And usually you would find students' apartments or care homes in this uh, particular genre. Uh, but yes, for a first-time investor with a limited budget, UK has a lot of options to offer. Uh, and also, you're right, UK is a very stable market. It's been a mature real estate market uh, from several decades. And uh, for any first-time buyer, I would highly recommend that, uh, you know, if you can get over your cultural affinity to Dubai. So when an Indian thinks of buying overseas, the first thing he thinks is, okay, let me try Dubai. Uh, if you're a mature investor and you want to try another stable market, then of course, UK is a very good option for you as well. I hope I've answered your question. Thank you. So, sorry, can I just add there that um, yeah. also this has been shown with like COVID um, yes. and, and also even after Brexit and all the other crises in the UK. Um, the, the UK uh, for the economy, uh, property finance, bank lending, the lawyers, it's a big market in the city of London. It, it generates a lot of tax for the government. So the government's always looking to get the property market going. Um, so even one of the first things the, the government did as part of lockdown was uh, the estate agents opened. They, they need this market to keep going. So um, the banks, will, a lot of banks, uh, even when there's a crisis um, in the UK, uh, because of the UK bank enforcement laws, more lenders keep coming to the UK market because they put, they're confident they can get their money back. Um, so the market is always rotating. There's always stuff going on in the UK. So even though there are crises across the world, people generally come to London to try and put their money into it. It's almost seen as a safe haven. So um, that's why in London, you, you might get a rental yield of 4%, but in the North, you might get 8 or 9%. It's a, it's a risk game, and but there's there's a lot of money coming to the UK, and the UK is always open for business. So um, you should feel confident to invest in the UK, I think. 
Okay, I just have one more question for Mona, if you don't mind. Uh, 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 considering I'm an Indian national citizen, uh, could I also uh, avail uh, mortgage services uh, in the UK? Uh, so that's a very interesting question. I know we have a lot of panelists who are experts in this, but I'll just try to give you my impartial two bits to it. Uh, RBI guidelines clearly state that an Indian investor cannot uh, avail of a mortgage in, uh, to purchase a property in the overseas markets. Uh, that is very categorically said by the RBI. However, I think the main uh, decision here for you as an investor to make is, so there are ways that you can avail of a mortgage. There are many ways that I'm sure uh, Nimit and the other uh, uh, panelists here uh, will be more than able to help you out uh, with you know, company formation, structured mortgage products, et cetera, et cetera. But I think what as an investor you need to keep in mind is the cost benefit analysis. If you're taking, a, if you're a first-time investor, and if you're taking a smaller apartment, then perhaps the the monies that are required for a company formation and to keep the company running to avail of a mortgage may not be that worth it for you. But if it's a high-value transaction, uh, then that could be worth it for you. Uh, so it totally depends on what is the price point of the property you're buying. Many of my investors are preferring to go for under-construction properties, which have a three to five-year payment horizon. So they can, uh, you know, plan their payments as per the LRS limits. So that would be an easier way to go by if you're a first-time investor looking at a smaller ticket size. So that's my two bits to you. Okay, thank you. Kamlesh, you would like to have your uh, views on this? You need to unmute, sir. Thank you for the question. Um, we have managed to help many investors. Um, and, and what we have seen that those uh, investors, they have one thing common, that they are entrepreneurs themselves. So um, funding is a less issue for them. However, those who are seeking the funding, I'm sure Anuj ji we all, we will also share that yes, it is possible to get the funding here. Uh, the loan to value, what Anuj ji mentioned LTV, is 60 percent maximum there were days before 2008 that bank used to lend money up to 90 percent of the value of the property or sometimes 100 percent those days are gone so the the banks are ring fence their risk and they would uh, not be happy to lend more than 60 percent uh, but i would also um, acknowledge monaji's point as well uh, if you want to invest, uh, look outside the London. There are many properties, there are many developments also coming up and look out economic zones as well, because economic zones are specially selected by the government where there are lots of tax breaks are there. So that is one way. Also, if you do not have the full money, then I think you could get into a partnership with one of the UK citizen or a friend that you have and I think over the period of time, you can buy him or her out. That's a possibility. Okay. Navinchi, here I would just like to add one more thing. Uh, you know, as Kamleshi rightly put it, that there are, there are ways, rightful, legal, legit ways of, uh, you know, acquiring a property, availing of mortgage financing. My advice to all the attendees here who are thinking of investing with a mortgage is to contact one of these experienced people. Uh, like Kamlesh Ji has given a brilliant idea right now. Uh, you know, you may find a very, very customized solution to match your needs. Go with the rightful partners is what I would like to say. Thank you. So, so just thank as well, yeah, as, as Kamal uh, just said, um, and also Marina, that there are various ways of doing it. Um, the, the market for in investment is a lot more fluid. Owner occupation in the UK, there's a lot more regulation because if it goes into stress, the bank doesn't want to be kicking someone out of their property. That's that's where the bank uh, tends to be. In terms of structuring, um, the way that UK tax laws have changed, um, they've actually it's actually more beneficial to buy a property in a limited company as opposed to your personal name because that you, you'll be charged um, is the tax will be higher in a personal name. As a result, you'll also get more debts against a limited company. 
So while there might be a slightly more added cost, the, I think generally the benefit is outweighing the cost at the moment to, to buying a limited company. Um, in the past, I've seen people buy it for mainly for investment purposes where they rent out the, the properties, but also businesses are buying properties in the UK that can be commercial. So there are various op um, options available. So I think as a team, we can we can get together and if um, if you've got any questions, just reach out to us and we can look at a structure for you. May I just add one more last thing, Navinji? Yeah, please come. Uh, I'd like to share that, you know, we all have one thing in common and that's the Indian DNA and we don't take no for an answer. So we find the solution <laughs> and I think we are very good at that. I have never come across a problem that is brought to us and we haven't found the solution. The solution may not be the one that you originally would have sought or, you know, would, would have been thinking, but we do find a solution. And uh, Monaji, I uh, thank you for, you know, reiterating the point. You need to get in touch with the right, knowledgeable, competent partner who can help you to do that. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I think there is some uh, issue uh, with the network at uh, this uh, side. I would request everybody to just give a quick sum up uh, as to the discussion we had today. Starting with uh, Ms. Jalota, I would request you, ma'am, give a quick sum up as for investment in the international market. Okay, so my summation for this uh, entire uh, panel today and you know whatever we've spoken is uh, diversification is the need of the hour don't shy away from it uh, be a smart investor put your money in different currencies uh, property is a great way to diversify in, into, into international markets understand what is your requirement of a property first are you buying it as a holiday home for self-use are you buying it for your child who may soon go to that country to study abroad? Are you buying it as a pure investment? Once you have your mind clear on the purpose of buying that property, regardless of the fact that you want to diversify, uh, I think there can be many attractive options and uh, rightful solutions given to you. Uh, and of course, like I said earlier, partner with the correct people. Uh, Every solution is not uh, generic. It has to be customized as per your situation. So talking uh, it out with relevant partners is extremely important. Uh, and all I would say is, um, you know, this is a vertical here which is only set to grow. This this line of investment is only going to going to grow higher, and um, you know, be a part of it and enjoy the benefits uh, over a period of time. So that's my summation for this thank, panel. Thank Thanks. you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am. I would also request Sail to give his view on this as well because we are yet to hear from him. Of course, the coaches are for us. Over Thank you, Thank you man. Uh, I think uh, one of the things which uh, people need to uh, take care of while buying an international property is uh, that which country are they going to be buying that international property? Do they have any business connect over there? Do they have any family connect over there? How close is that particular country from the home country in which they operate out of? Uh, then you need the right consultants to guide you right. Because uh, the process is complicated, right? There could be different laws, uh, which could be very, very different from what your home country can have. Uh, the developers could have uh, different payment plans, mortgage, as uh, everybody uh, suggested and decided, that could be a uh, uh, little complicated from what your home country would offer. Uh, third, there are many other new destinations which uh, are right now available uh, on the offer. Uh, Southeast Asia is uh, one destination. As I said, Indonesia is coming in. Sri Lanka is coming in. Uh, we have uh, a lot of properties from Thailand which have been coming in. And they offer a pretty low ticket size, starting with as low as 40 lakh rupees. Uh, somebody who cannot afford uh, a property worth one CR on above, they could definitely look at these uh, more affordable options. Of course, you have to go with a credible developer. You have to look at uh, the developer's background because sitting at a remote place in India, you would not be completely aware about who you're buying with. So it's very important to have a reliable consultant involved who has a presence both in the Indian market and the foreign market. Somebody who can guide you right with your hard-earned money. 
and right now uh, uh, is the time right uh, i think there is no wrong time to buy real estate whether in india whether abroad uh, property is going to go expensive irrespective the demand is increasing the supply is limited uh, as far as the pricing is concerned indian properties are equally expensive as uh, foreign real estate is so people who are thinking of looking at international properties as an option uh, i think the time is right uh, the developers are giving the best possible offers uh, because the global economy everybody is under a little bit of stress so this could be used as an opportunity and this adversity can be converted into some opportunity which you can leverage uh, for your own self use thank you so much for inviting me here thank you sahil for sharing your views now i would like to invite mr ishad rahman to give his concluding remarks sir you need to unmute my audio clear yes sir right it's a it's a time to diversify your uh, portfolios definitely uh, if you have uh, properties back in india uh, they should explore the new uh, Uh, ventures and explore new markets, especially places like Dubai, where it's still giving seven or eight percent compared to three or four percent in India. And also, Dubai has got a lot of things to offer in terms of, you know, the lifestyle, the 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 the, the, the infrastructure. So these things attract a lot of people for uh, investments. And then also, the very important point about Dubai, if if Dubai is uh, the currency is pegged to dollars, now. If you look at the dollar conversion in India, it's all it's going uh, high every month, every every year. Uh, here in UAE, the dollars are pegged to dirham, so you should have your portfolio in international currencies as well, which is USDs. Uh, I totally agree with Mona. What she said is absolutely right. You need to find out what exactly you want. You need to find out which developers you can work with. Uh, working with a very good developer in terms of investing with them is very important. because uh, you know only a experienced uh, developer wherever in the world can manage uh, the things properly it's not only building a property but also post completion the way we have to manage the properties as well joining a, a, a international brand definitely get you more appreciation in terms of returns that's proven all over the world whenever you are associated with any international brand whether it's fashion cars or any other thing your property value goes up so this is one of the reason also a lot of people they invest in tamak i definitely recommend uh, people from india or all over the world to look at what we have and talk to us i'm very thankful for to all of you to inviting me for this forum and hope to keep in touch with all of you guys thank you so much sorry to interrupt thank you very much so, sorry to interrupt just a quick question uh, mr ashad tamak uk or tamak uh, dubai which one what should invest in Or in Dubai? The Mac, the Mac, UK or the Mac Dubai? I'm from the Mac Dubai. <laughs> no, which one? One should invest in because you have properties in both the areas now. Yeah, we do sell also UK. Okay. See, Dubai is selling. Dubai, we sell everything. We have projects wherever we have, we sell it. Great, great. My name is Impartial Third Party. Yes, yes, ma'am. Please. So, as an impartial third party, where I deal with all developers, I can tell you that the Mac Dubai, of course, is a very large player, but the the Mac Nine M's project in London is just stunning. So, I would encourage people to look at both jurisdictions, and I am completely impartial. I work with all developers, so this is just a tip from me to the investors. I, I hope it's. Thank you so much, Muna. I'll get in touch with you post this event, <laughs> and uh, we can discuss more on it. <laughs> thank you thank you ajay so i invite anuj to give his concluding remarks now please mr anuj okay so yes i think we've been some great insights on um from throughout the panel uh plenty of great questions coming in um yeah i think it, there is an opportunity in the market to buy properties at a discount to what they had been trading at um so if you're willing to be bold and go for it i think you can you can generate um There is a potential to generate a profit in the future. Um, I think also, as Mona said, um, each person's situation is unique, so you need you really need to speak to um, various people and develop a customized solution for yourself. So, there's myself. Um, I can help with structuring the sort of the the, the loan aspects. Um, Kamlesh in the in, in Greater Manchester, he can help with um, you know the, the the legal structure. So, there are various people at, at play here who can. 
um, help you get the right solution to buy um, the type of property that, that you actually require. Thank you, Anut. I, I see Mr. Kalra wants to ask something. Yeah, Mr. Kalra. You need to unmute, sir. I, I have a suggestion for Anuj and Irshad Ji that most of my clients, when they are into in a position that in a mode to invest overseas, say into property or real estate there, they are in a first in a mode to swap their properties. They want to sell some of the property in India, which may be an old ancestral property, and then use that money and take help of friends like Anuj to invest in some real estate new property in GCC. So I would request that it is only the second leg which Anuj and Isad they are taking care. The first leg also, if they have some contacts in India, that they want to swap their properties. It is not that they want to uh, one adding, suppose they already have four properties, they want to add one more into them. Particularly, I have seen most of the clients, they want to swap their properties. If that window can also be opened up and help them to take care of the globe and the uh, uh, umbrella sort of a thing, that they understand that the entire gamut of the transaction is taken care. Well, uh, you mean, uh, sorry, uh, the, you mean to say that they want to exchange the properties from India to Dubai? No, they don't want to exchange. They want to swap it in the sense they want to sell the property in India and then use that money somewhere in investing in Dubai or in other country. Take help of Anuj also to pull the money. Yes, see, selling the property in India, you know, you know the way how to sell it. Uh, coming back to transfer the money to Dubai, you have LRS, which is by RBI. That is $250,000 per annum. Now, when they buy a ready property in Dubai, we do have the payment plan, which goes for two or three years. Yes. So they can take the help of payment plan. This is without interest. So they can okay. sell the property. They have two years time to pay the money, right? $250,000 is close to a million dirham a year. So within two years, they can finish two million dirham property. And that applies for each family member. So if there are three family members who've got $250,000 each, they can put $750,000 a year. So this can be solved easily. It's not an issue. No, that is what I'm telling. The, such transactions should be taken care. It is taken care. I mean, these yeah, things yeah. are happening. The, yes, the, yes. the chartered accountants and the bank, they play an important role. Uh, yes. Obviously, there are taxations back in India where they have to clear everything. Uh, yes. And uh, I don't think you need to justify as long as you pay 250000 to buy a property uh, outside India. It's it's allowed. Yeah. And just another uh, thing also, Sachi, you said you've got... To add, uh, so, Kalraji, yeah. so, I'll just like to add one more thing. I completely understand where you're coming from. Uh, this is a challenge which I face a lot as well, where the clients say, look, I have a huge property portfolio in India. Is it possible for me to get, uh, you know, liquidate this portfolio and then invest it overseas? And I know your intention is to uh, understand whether there are NRI connections that our esteemed panelists have in their jurisdictions who may be interested in purchasing some properties in, in, in India and whether they can play a role of a mediator in such situations. Exactly. So uh, just to clarify, this was what Mr. Karl Ram meant. And uh, so I would just like to add in one more thing that, uh, you know, it. Although this would be an ideal situation, but in my experience of a decade of working with various partners internationally, they probably would not like to get into the transactional aspect of real estate. Uh, sure, if they are friends and they know somebody is looking out for a property, they would uh, you know, refer the client uh, just like that to you. But uh, transactionally, they would uh, probably focus more on which is their core competency, which is structuring and understanding how uh, to make a successful transaction in their jurisdiction happen. Uh, but we have a very strong network of uh, Indian Brokers Association. And Kalraji, whenever you have a case like that, uh, please do call me up. Uh, I'm sure within uh, me, uh, Sahil, all of us, we have enough uh, brokers who will help your clients liquidate their Indian portfolio. Thank you. And sorry, can I just add, I think another way to think of it is if they got an existing property in India, um, can they get a loan against that property to raise the finance? 
and it gives you more liquidity. So that's another option. So th there are options available. But that is uh, disallowed by the RBI. I would just like to say that here. You cannot take a mortgage on your Indian property uh, to use those funds to uh, you know, participate in an overseas acquisition. Okay. That is clearly disallowed. OK, All right, thanks. I think thank you very much, Anujji and Munaji. I will now invite Mr. Kamdesh Rajput to give his concluding remarks. Thank you very much for the invitation. I like to be very simple in saying, take a balanced view. Your investment needs to be safe and it needs to grow. And uh, you need to balance. Uh, what type of property, but also which country, which region, the economic condition, the political stability, and the financial strength of the region is quite important as well. You also need to be very clear about the uh, due, many investors do a lot of due diligence about the property and the funding, but they pay little attention about the due diligence of the engaging partner which they are working with. It is quite important that your engaging partner is competent, knowledgeable, and ethical to make sure that you know your investment advice is absolutely impartial. So that's what I would suggest, that uh, make sure that you have a right team with you. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you very much, Kamlesh Ji. So just we before we conclude, Nimit, you have something to say as conclusion? Uh, thank you, Naveenji, for uh, having me here. And uh, I hope that my presentation was useful for everyone. Uh, basically, through this platform, you can market your clients, prospective clients across the globe without any, uh, you know, without any difficulties of traveling or commuting. And for you also don't have to travel. And in case of you, uh, you know, uh, if you need to have a live demo, you can just send me an email. I've sent my email address in the chat box and we can give you, my team can give you schedule a live demo for you. And we can discuss all the integrated features uh, in detail once we do the live demo. Thank you once again for having me here. So thank, thank you very much. So before we conclude, I would like to, on behalf of PhD Chamber of Commerce and Industry, thank one and all for being with us today. Though the Honorable Prime Minister was addressing there, but still I can see we have 40 people with us. So business has to go on. So this is what I think I take it that way. So thank you very much. Thank you, Anujji. Thank you, Kamlesh ji. Thank you, Ishad ji. Thank you, Muna. Thank you, Sahil. And thank you, Nimit. Thank you very much, Kalra ji, for being with us. And we look forward to have more sessions with you. In 10 days, I think there's a second time, Kamlesh ji, we are having the session together. Monaji, we have been doing it. So I think regularly every two weeks we'll be having these kind of sessions. And soon the exhibition which Nimit was mentioning, we'll be doing it in August and want to have participation from you all in that. Thank you very much once again for being with us and look forward to have more meetings with you and be safe and be healthy. Thank you very much. Thank you.